Welcome to biologyexamsorry.com. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about the bonds involved in protein structure. First of all, let us start with an introduction about the protein structure. Proteins consist of amino acids that are joined by peptide bonds, and that forms the lean that linear chains of amino acids forms the primary structure. The folding of primary structure forms the secondary structure. Mainly, the bond involved is the hydrogen bond. Further folding of secondary structure forms the tertiary structure, which is a biologically active conformation of a protein. Many bonds are involved. In some cases, like hemoglobin, there are number of subunits or number of amino acid chains that are intermingled and bonded together, forming quaternary structure. Now moving into the bonds present in these structures. In the primary structure, the basic bond is the bond between the amino acid, that is the peptide bond. And there is also disulfide bond between cysteine residues. Some consider this as the bond that is involved in tertiary structure. Anyway, there is a bonding. And in secondary structure, the major bond is the hydrogen bond apart from peptide bond and disulfide bond. In the tertiary structure, hydrophobic interactions are there. Hydrogen bonds, ionic bonds, Van der Waals forces, disulfide bonds, almost all bonds in making a protein structure. Quaternary structure, same as the tertiary structure, all major bonds are involved. Now moving into the detail of each bonds. First of all, the most important connection between the amino acid, that is the peptide bond. Each amino acid consists of a central carbon atom with an amino group and a carboxyl group and a hydrogen atom. This is a constant region and this is a side chain R1 that may vary between amino acid. Peptide bond is formed between the carboxyl group of the first amino acid and the amino group of the second amino acid. Here, there is a release of water molecule. From here, this two hydrogen atom along with oxygen that results in release of water molecule, the rest forms the peptide bond. That is C double bond O NH. That, that is called as the peptide bond. So peptide bond is a bond that is formed between amino acids by release of a water molecule and the bond is C double bond O NH. Now moving to the second type of second bond that is called as a disulfide bond. Disulfide bond occurs only in certain amino acids that is the cysteine. There should have a certain specific group which is called as a sulfhydryl group. And you can see right here, this is the SH group. The only amino acid with SH group is the cysteine. So this is a bond that is formed between cysteine residues, maybe in the same chain or maybe far apart in different chains. And the bond formed is the SS bond uh, by the oxidation, that is the removal of hydrogen. And this is the bond CH2, SS CH2. This is also called as disulfide bridge. And what is happening is oxidation or removal of hydrogen atom. Two cysteine residues are involved, and this 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 is an important bond that imparts rigidity to the protein molecule, and this can happen within the same chain or between far away chains or between different chains. Now moving to the third type of bond in the protein that is the hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bond is a bond between a hydrogen atom and an electronegative atom like oxygen, nitrogen, etc. In the case of amino acid. An amino acid, here you can see this is the serine. Serine has a side chain of OH and this is another serine amino acid in a different chain. There also there is OH. This hydrogen will bind to the electronegative oxygen that is called as a hydrogen bond. Often amino acid with side chains NH, OH are involved participating in the hydrogen bond formation. Now moving into the next bond that is the ionic bond and Van der Waals forces. Ionic bond is a bond between oppositely charged amino acids. Often aspartic acid as you all know this is a base acidic amino acid COOH negatively charged amino acid whereas lysine is a positively charged amino acid. When both these amino acids come together there is a chance of formation of a bond which is called a cyanic bond or the bond that is formed between electrically opposite molecules. And then there is a second type of bond which is called as a Van der Waals force and is transient weak electrical attraction of of atoms or between atoms and this is a sum total of all other non-covalent associations between electrically neutral molecules. Uh, uh, Van der Waals force is the weakest of these bonds uh, but altogether these bonds there are a number of Van der Waals force bonds within a protein molecule that makes the structure more strong. Now the final bond which is called as a hydrophobic bond 
and in this figure you can see this blue molecules are hydrophilic regions and red ones are hydrophobic regions or water loving amino acids and water heating amino acids and in 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 hydrophobic interactions actually the bond is between two nonpolar groups or hydrophobic amino acids are 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 adjusted or are placed arranged interior to that of the water protein so that it is excluded from the water molecules outside and these interiorly placed hydrophobic amino acids forms bonds and that is called as a hydrophobic bond or the bond between two nonpolar groups or hydrophobic amino acids polar amino acids will be on the outside nonpolar amino acids like alanine valine leucine etc on the interior side that is protected from the water and this is a major driving force that is involved in protein folding now the summary of what we have discussed the first and the foremost bond is the peptide bond that is between the amino acids in a protein chain and the second bond is the disulfide bond that can occur between that can occur within the same chain or the different chain the amino acid residue involved is a cysteine residue a sulfidyl group is required the only amino acid with sulfidyl group is a cysteine and the third bond is a hydrogen bond that is responsible for the helix helical structure beta pleated pleat sheet etc that is between the hydrogen atom and an electronegative atom like oxygen and the fourth bond is the ionic bond that is between oppositely charged amino acids you can see this is a positively charged and this is negatively charged the bond that is formed between oppositely charged amino acids and the final and the foremost most important bond in Uh, protein folding that is the hydrophobic interactions where um, amino acids which are hydrophobic are arranged inside to the interior and that will form bonds and all polar uh, electrically charged amino acids are placed towards water or water loving amino acids are placed towards the outside and or that forms the backbone of a particular protein and i will be back with that another topic till then take care bye bye you are with biologicsumsforyou.com